Shame on you. Look, what did you do that for? I didn't buy them. No, but you tried to. It's bad enough picking on a straw man, but when you go around picking on poor little dogs... Well, you didn't have to go and hit me, did you? Is my nose bleeding? Um, who would you would want to be? Would you want to be more like Aubrey Marcus, or would you want to be more like um, Andrew Tate, or would you want to be more like Elon Musk? Now, for Christians, of course, they want to be like Jesus. Now... It's very interesting that what, what, what Matthew had to say about Jesus in this video. Something about, there's something in my mind at one point uh, regarding Jesus. I, there's a reason I don't talk about Jesus in my book. Um, at one point, I decided something. Um, I decided I wasn't going to talk about Jesus until I was satisfied with my understanding of what Jesus was really all about. And it's like, it's part of my development at one point I decided I decided I didn't understand you know and then I started just to think differently and uh, now I understand a lot more things in the in the Old Testament than I used to even even since I wrote my book I mean I, I don't stop I keep you know if, if, if anyone's wondering what I'm doing now <laughs> I'm advancing my own uh, understanding you know? now now of course, there's tension in there because on one hand, all of these things we have to do in a parallel fashion. We don't stop living in order to understand. Um, we live while we understand, and it's a it's a transjective process back and forth. We're trying to live and understand at the same time because as we do things, we learn, and as we learn, we try to do things, and it's a it's supposed to be an iterative process. So it's not just all up in here and we plan the whole thing and then we apply. No, we, we play, and play is exactly the right word. Um, uh, Peterson's conversation with that comic was also very interesting. It's another video I want to spend a little bit of time with. Because um, I actually got a lot to say about that video. But so so we play and we iterate. But a big part of this, I'm running out of time because of a conversation in 10 minutes. A big part of this is the question of the person that we are doing the collective relevance realization through. And, and let's say someone like Jesus, because let's say you look at Aubrey Marcus and he's a high status male and he... Um, you know, he's got, he's got attributes and values that a lot of people esteem. And so that's why they watch him. You look at Elon Musk, or you look at Andrew Tate, or you look at Jordan Peterson, you look at these high status males or for women, you know, some of these women might look at Kim Kardashian and say, she is what I aspire to become the Buddha. Well, now you're really in a very different track. Jesus was Jesus successful. Do you want that kind of life? In many ways, what Jesus says is if you live like I do, you will get treated like I have been. And, and this is something that sort of brings us up short because we think, is that really the way I want to live? So so what is what would table flipping look like to a Christian, like proper table flipping? Like what is that? What we don't that know because like? the Christians are all wimps and they won't do it. I've been telling them what to do and they won't do it. They're all weak. So, so Mark, you're, I'm, it sounds like you're a Christian. Like, do you flip tables? Like, what's your metaphorical flip? Oh, table? I flip tables all the time. <laughs> that's yeah. one of the reasons why I say, no, no, I'll, it's fine. You want to keep kick me out of your club for flipping tables? That's fine. Tables got to get flipped, though, dude. So I'm there. Like, what's I'm one, there for you. I'll take the hit. I don't what, care. What's like, is there a, is there one example of a table flip that was the right thing to do that in your mind that you've done? One example, like how would yeah. I narrow it down to one? I'm, I'm, <laughs> what I'm just, are you talking? I do this all the time. I'm just wondering what the proper what what a proper name table flip is. Middle like. name, <laughs> yeah, Gavin. Gavin, I do it literally all the time. I do it to people all the time. I do it to individuals. I do it to groups. Right? I come right out there and I say these Neoplatonists are crazy. Like they're nuts. They don't understand what they're talking about. They're just wrong. They don't know how to read. Like, do you think that's not flipping tables? Do you think I'm not pissing people off when I say that? Okay. But what about when I when I go up to Jacob and Jacob goes, oh, yeah, Mark, you know, you're no more popular than I am. And I go, yeah, Jacob, but I didn't rage quit BOM ever, not once. So, so if you think we're the same, you're wrong. Like, so sorry. A table, so a table flip. You don't think that's flipping over tables? And, and now I'm flipping it on the Jew there. So there you go. I'm just, 
So a table flip would be, you're saying that a table flip can happen in this virtual space. Of course it can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not a physical, it's not necessarily a physical thing. Like what is it? It's, it's not like the fact that Jesus is physically flipping tables is nothing to do with the difference between Christians going, Oh, you know what? You have to be nice to people and just be kind. And eventually they'll come over to you, but it's bullshit. That's, that's wrong. It's just wrong. It's observably wrong and it's not working for them and they don't want to admit it because then they'd have to have a conflict and they like, oh no, conflict, so, we're creatures, piss off. Conflict is how you change people. And yeah, you have to be careful with that for sure. They don't walk up to them and whack them in the head. But you know, that's what the evangelicals, that's the mistake they make. They walk up and they push a bunch of dopey propositions at people. But proper evangelization is participatory, not propositional. In other words, you live a good Christian life and you don't talk about it unless you're asked. That's the right way to evangelize. But you also have to be out there. You can't live hidden. You can't be like, oh, the lions aren't going to eat me. I'm going to live hidden. Well, the yeah. lions are going to eat you last, but they're not not going to eat you. And I'm pretty sure your job is to get in front of the lions and say, eat me, lion. I dare you. Right? Because half the time the lions aren't going to eat you. And that's not going to be everybody. We're going to lose people for sure. But I'm a pragmatist. Pragmatists calculate casualties first. We're not idealists. We don't think there's a no casualty scenario. We just think you got to get out there, period. Like a life sucks and it's hard and so struggle. And is the, is struggle the, sometimes you fail. Is, so the meaning of life is flipping tables in the virtual space? No, it's not. No, no. It's being Christ-like. But part of being Christ-like is flipping tables. And I don't do it in the virtual space. I'm, I do I'm, it in the personal space, I'm too. A, I'm intentionally doing some ad absurdum just to... That's, that's, that's fine. Do all the ad absurdum you want. Yeah. You know, that's, it's good contrast. Like, but, that's, uh, I'm fine with it. Yeah. That, that's yeah. missing, too, is like, I mean, in order to be a Christian, like, it's like you're a Christian. Are you willing to be eaten by a lion? Like, yes or no? Like... It's really simple. Like being Christian isn't easy. It's very, very difficult. And that, that I think that, well, that's not really anything I ever got growing up in the tradition that I, I was in. It, nobody ever asked me. I mean, I was young, you know, uh, you're not going to tell that to children, I guess. So, I mean, it's a little more nuanced, but. How is, how is yelling people, yelling at people for defiling the temple and yelling at them for cheating the, 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 the populace, not a disagreement and a confrontation? Like, what, what part of disagreement and confrontation do you not understand? Of so course there, it's a disagreement and a confrontation. Of course so it is. There might be something about, like, what is the most holy thing? And so... Maybe this was the only time Jesus flipped tables and it had something to do with the importance of the temple, for example. I think that, yeah, I think the earth is our temple, guys. I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. No, I'm with Corey. I think it's an exceptional uh, circumstance. I don't, people, I don't think people it is. People love applying that passage everywhere. No, I, I don't think it is exceptional. And, and I don't think that's the only instance of Jesus being difficult. Well, it's good. To, it's good I got some disagreement pulled out here. So, but yeah, the... Yeah, I would say like there are situations where you need to be, you need to have courage, right, to face the lion. And then the question is just, you know, is it the right time? And then there's probably a question like, "Thy will be done." Is this the really the right. time that God wants me to have the courage, or is this a time whenever I need to be? Well, uh, of course, you need discernment. Sure. It's yep. not easy, and it's not a formula, and it's not a procedure, and you can't just follow it. For sure, right? Ideally. But you also can't do nothing because either you uphold the truth or you have no disagreements with people, but you don't do both because you can't do both. It's not an option. And you just have to accept the conflict and figure out how to deal with it. And I'm not saying figuring that out is easy. And I'm not saying that I get it right all the time or anything like that. And I'm not thinking anybody else is going to get it right all the time either because Christians are for lions and sometimes people are going to get eaten. And I calculate casualties first because I'm a pragmatist and not an idealist. That's the difference between the two. I don't, it just, know, what you, that's I don't know what you mean by calculate casualties first. You don't assume zero casualties. You assume if you're going to do anything in the world that there's this going to be is, damage from that one way or the other. This is like your idea, like what, what you say about doing a startup. You're, you're going to try 10 times and you'll fail nine times. Yeah, like well, that. if you're lucky, yeah, you're, <laughs> you're going to try 100 times and fail 99 is more likely. Right. Okay. Right. Or, 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 or look, 
if you're going to if you're going to get into a conflict with somebody, you're going to have to realize you're not coming out of any conflict ahead. In all ways, you're going to have to lose like the act of conflict and the fact that conflict is going to exist means that you're going to lose something somewhere along the line. That's going to happen. So Mark, he says the whole world is the temple and the truth is important. So where do you, what do you, now let's let someone else talk. I, I'm just, I'm surrounded by a lot of Mennonites who would disagree with his interpretation. The, the what only, would the, what would the Mennonites, what is their perspective? Uh, the only casualty they would allow would be themselves. That, that, that's sometimes the casualty, right? But there's not no casualties if it's yourself. There's not none because conflict requires, requires that. Like it, once there's a conflict, there's going to be some kind of casualty and it might not be your whole self. It might be a piece of, a piece of you. Fine. Fair enough. Whatever. But we don't ever assume a utopia or an idyllic vision as a pragmatist that says you're not going to, you know, that you're going to come away unscathed. You're not getting out alive. <laughs> you're not getting out unscathed. You're not, you're not going through life without struggle. None of these things are going to happen. So there's a there is a serious question about the uh, that will be done and versus like is like if you're throwing a, ta a table, is it is it you or is it what is it what you want or is it what God wants? And that's the to me, yeah, that's, that's the really hard part. That's part of the Christian struggle for sure. Yeah. Like Christians are supposed to struggle and, and look, suffering is inevitable. But struggling, you know, can either be turned into joy or more suffering. It's up to you. And you're not going to get that right all the time either. But it is what it is. Like, that's the Christian mission. That's what you do. That's that's how to Christian. I'm not much of a table flipper, so I just need to know when I get when I can uh, I, get I don't the know, approval Gavin, to flip I, a table. I would, I would disagree. You flipped quite a few tables before. It was all accidental. Well, but, but see... But see, that matters. Like, this is yeah. part of my point, is that you're not avoiding flipping tables. You could say, I didn't flip any tables on purpose all day long. But that doesn't yeah. mean that, that no tables got flipped. And you have to be able to accept that. Like, you have to be able to accept that. Do not think I have come to bring peace on Earth. I've come not to bring peace. but a sword. I have come to sow discord between a man and his father, between a daughter and her mother, a man's enemies will be members of his own family. You may say we have left our belongings to become your followers. I tell you this, anyone who has left home or father, mother, wife, children, land for the kingdom of God shall be rewarded a hundred times over on earth and inherit the kingdom of God. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But if a man will lose his life for my sake and for the gospel I bring you, he will save it. For many that are first will be last. And the last first. <laughs>